Here's the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. I'm going to do the screen replacement, but it is going to be only on the outer screen. So here is the kit that I got in order to replace the screen. The kit came with almost everything you need in order to perform the screen replacement. I started by hitting the front of the device in order to soften the double-sided tape on the back of the screen. And I used my suction cup and tried to pull. It didn't work. I hit the front of the device again and tried pulling with the suction cup again but it wasn't working. Samsung used some very very strong double-sided tape on the back of the screen of the Galaxy Z Fold 4. So this was after maybe 20 minutes of hitting the screen and trying the suction cup, it wasn't working and I tried to use alcohol also in order to help me remove the screen. It didn't work also. So you can see here the screen is starting to have some burn after using that amount of heat on the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and this is when I started to use alcohol to try to see if it can help me. So as you just saw it, the screen of this device is perfectly fine, only the glass is broken. So my goal with this old screen was to remove the screen safely without cracking or damaging the OLED panels on the screen. And currently I'm using a metal tool, very flat thin metal tool that I use in order to separate the glass and the screen from an iPhone. But here with this Galaxy Z Fold 4, that solution also is not working. The double sided tape is really really strong. You can see on the left of the screen, I have the go off solution. This is a strong chemical that is supposed to soften the double sided tape. So to put it simply, when I use this go off solution, this is my last resort in order to help me remove the screen. And this is going to break down all the double sided tape, the glue that is under the screen. So after using this, I was very surprised that it doesn't work also. So the last thing that I can tell you about the Galaxy Z Fold 4 screen, the outer screen, if the screen is broken but the screen panels are still good, in order to replace the screen, unfortunately you will have to break the screen and completely render the screen useless in order to replace the screen with a new screen. So at this moment I wasn't finished yet, the next thing that I will do was to break one corner of the screen in order to have an opening, then I can insert my guitar pick and try, hopefully, to remove the screen without damaging it. This is what I did. I cracked one side of the screen and right after that, when I inserted the guitar pick, you can see the black spot on the screen. So the screen started to get damaged. So I'm showing all this in order to make you save some time. If you want to recover the old screen, it is almost impossible to do it and you will have to break the screen and completely damage that screen in order to replace it. I see those guys coming already saying that it is possible to do it, but if you do not have a freezer like the big repair shop does in order to freeze all the glue and remove the screen, by doing it manually, you're going to need to break the screen in order to remove it. So nevertheless, if you try replacing your other screen on the Galaxy Z Fold 4, let me know in the comment box how it went when you try to remove the other screen if you want to salvage it. So as for me, if your screen is broken and the double sided tape is still the original that Samsung has put on the screen, you will need to do what I did, break one corner of the screen, insert a guitar pick and start moving your guitar pick right and left in order to separate the screen from the frame of the device. I did one with the Galaxy Z Fold 3. That screen was the original screen that Samsung has put on the device, but that screen was completely damaged. It wasn't responsive. And I believe I was able to remove that screen without damaging or breaking down the screen completely because the double-sided tape has degraded by all these years of using that device. So apart from that, replacing the screen on a Galaxy Z Fold and Galaxy Z Fold 4, the outer screen is very easy. So on this device, Samsung has used two double-sided tape. One is attached directly to the digitizer on the back of the screen and the other one is attached to the glass that is on top of the digitizer and the OLED screen. So you have two set of double-sided tape that are glued to the frame of the device. This is perfectly fine and very good engineering in order to have the IPX8 water resistance on these devices. But in order to replace the screen or remove the screen safely, it is nearly impossible. The screen on this Galaxy Z Fold 4 is attached by one flex cable. So the inner screen is still good. I just turned the device off and I'm going to remove the bracket that is holding the flex cable of the screen. Then after that, I can simply unplug or disconnect the flex cable for the outer screen. Disconnecting the flex cable of the screen is easy. You simply need to pull upward the flex cable of the screen gently and it is going to be detached. 
So here is the new screen for the Galaxy Z Fold 4. You need to remove this plastic that is attached to the flex cable. This is something that you need to take your time to do in order to not damage or stretch the flex cable of the screen. This plastic is there to make sure that the flex cable of the screen does not get any damage during transit or during shipping. I still think that they can do something about this because it is a little bit confusing and difficult to remove this plastic and if you're not really patient you might damage the flex cable while trying to remove that plastic on the back of the screen. So if you get the screen with this flex cable, this additional flex cable attached to the flex cable of the screen, this is simply an extension in order to test the screen before they ship the screen to you. Okay, so now the next thing to do is to attach the screen flex cable to the motherboard and then turn the device on, make sure that the screen is working before we finish or seal the screen on the back of this Galaxy Z Fold 4. So this test is very important. You do not have to trust the seller. You need to test the screen in order to make sure that it is working properly. Everything is working, then you can start moving on to the next step. So as for me, with this Galaxy Z Fold 4, I tested the screen. The touch response is very good. I do not have any issues with it. So I'm going to attach the small bracket, the plastic bracket on top of the flex cable. So before the installation of the small plastic bracket, you need to make sure that you clean the area where the screen has to sit. Normally, you should remove all the double-sided tape that is on the frame of the device because they are no longer usable and they are no longer sticky. The kit came with B7000, a small B7000. This is what I'm doing now. I'm adding B7000 on the area where the screen has to sit before I seal the screen of this Galaxy Z Fold 4. Make sure that you add B7000 only on the area where the double-sided tape was because you have some areas that do not need to have B7000 and those are some openings that are left or engineered to be open. Like for example, at the top of the screen, you have the front speaker. You do not want to have B7000 on that area because it will clog the front speaker and you will not hear anything. Also very important, make sure that you do not have any B7000 on the front facing camera. Obviously, it is going to not see anything if there is B7000 on the front facing camera. So after installation of the screen, I turn the device on in order to see if it is working normally. So for the next step, I'm adding some retaining clamps that are going to apply constant pressure on the screen to make sure that it is properly sealed. The side of the hinge is very big. My normal repair clamps are not going to fit on that area. So this is why I use my older repair clamps that I use on my previous and very old videos. So the next step will be to turn the device on, maybe try to test the device again to make sure that everything is all right and especially the front facing camera, you need to make sure that it is working properly and there is no issues with focus. I would say the repair clamp should stay on the device for maybe 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. And if you want to leave them longer than 30 minutes, it is all good. And here is the final result for me. You can see that the device screen is working properly. I just have a few spill of B7000 on the hinge area and also you may find B7000 spill on all four corners. You simply need to rub on the B7000 glue and it will disappear. After doing this for a few minutes, the device should be good. Subscribe, like and share and I will see you on my next video.